next project is wiring up the driver. Okay, with this driver, what I'm going to do, if you if you use this one, it's a uh, fairly simple process. I'm going to uh, add my white and black wires on this side where it says AC in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my white wire on this inside terminal. I'm going to use my black wire, which is the white is typically neutral. Black is um, uh, the line. If you're uh, not in America, if you're in Europe, it's going to be blue and brown. But the, uh, the line side is the one that I'd like to have going through this little fuse that is mounted here, which is you know pretty much traditional. You break the line side and not the, um, uh, and not the neutral side when you, if you blow a fuse. Okay, the other thing on this other side, I've got plus and minus here. So I'm going to put my, uh, my plus in. Uh, these may actually, I'm going to twist this a little bit, these may actually come with um, with wires on them, which in which case uh, really all you need to do is solder onto the LED and, and crimp ends onto the leads that come on it. I actually took the leads off of this because I had pre-prepared the, um, the leads that I have here. So, here's what I got. Now, I'm just going to take this and I'm actually going to turn it upside down and solder it from the bottom of the board. So there's that. Make sure that my wires are sticking through and I'll do the AC first. Same technique here. Uh, on a circuit board you want to do this as quickly as you possibly can because if you put too much heat on these copper traces on the bottom of the board you'll actually uh, burn them right off of the board and they'll, they'll start to peel up on you. So basically I get a little bit of solder on the end of my soldering iron, get it on there, feed a little bit of solder in, and then pull off. And there's a nice uh, solder joint for that neutral side and I'm going to do the same thing for the line side and all you have to do is you know wait for the solder to start melting especially around the um, the lead itself and there there you go two solder joints and my my AC circuit is on, on the other side put my plus on same thing, I'm just going to flip this upside down. Running out a lot of lead on my soldering iron here. Take this little bit of solder on the soldering iron. Helps to clean your soldering iron off on a, either a wet sponge or a wet rag every once in a while. But for me, you know, just make sure that you don't get too big a blob of solder on there, that you don't roll over to, um, to uh, any other component or any other trace. And that's all you need, just a tiny little bit of solder. And we've got a good joint there. We'll finish this last one up right now. There we go. Okay, now I'm done soldering. All right. So there it is. We've got our AC side. We've got our DC side for the um, for the LED. And here's my LED. These wires connect thusly. I'll just put them in like that. And uh, I'm going to turn this off again. I'm actually going to uh, add a. Um, uh, a, a plug to this thing so I can plug it in and test it out before I go through the trouble of mounting it up inside my hood and I'll be right back. Okay, uh, I've got this wired on now and uh, as you can see the uh, cord I'm using here it's a, uh, it's a uh, an old uh, basically computer cord I cut the end off and stripped off so I've got this is a you know US AC plug and um, the, but it is the uh, European standard, which is brown and blue. So if you have a, uh, if you're working on European standard, um, what you want is the uh, brown wire is your line side, and the blue wire is your neutral. And um, uh, you could there's a bunch of different ways to uh, try to remember that. I, I try to think of it as the uh, blue wire is is uh, cold or neutral, and you know what we call the hot wire in the U.S is uh, brown because it's burned or toasted or whatever so but um, I'm going to plug this in and uh, you're probably going to be blinded by the light and there you go 
Okay, so one very, very extremely bright 100 watt LED. Do not be surprised if it takes uh, five to ten seconds for this thing to come on the first time. Um, I'm not sure what the cause of that is, except um, you know possibly it's uh, um, uh, something in the driver circuit itself that has to charge up. But uh, the first time you plug these things in, they do they do take quite a while to come on. So don't uh, don't sweat it if you plug it in and it, it takes a good five seconds. All right, next uh, thing we're going to do is I'm going to mount this up in the hood and we'll come back once I have the, um, the lights running on the tank. All right, so here's the final product. I've got uh, two 100 watt LEDs over the tank. Um, as you can see, there's some very, very nice uh, shimmer that you get because these are uh, more of a, a point kind of a light. Um, and uh, you know it, it beats the heck out of just a, a regular old tube you know fluorescent tube fixture and I actually think it's a little bit more of a shimmer than I were, was getting off of my metal halides so um, 200 watts probably a little less than 200 just because this uh, driver is uh, slightly uh, low uh, you know slight, uh, slightly low current so I'm pr probably a little bit less than a full 100 watts there but uh, if you saw my part one video you saw the first test so I'm not going to go over everything again and how this tank works and, and why it's uh, kind of a mess right now but it's been about uh, two weeks since that uh, first video and you can already see um, I'm, I'm starting to get some carlin algae back on the uh, on the rockscape in there I actually found that I had a live tube worm still living in a tank after lights out for about four years uh, I am starting to get some plant growth back so it's kinda neat there's a few little mushrooms in there and, and things that somehow survived the last so many years and uh, just you know, just a couple last pointers about these LEDs. Um, they do create heat, so you have to, um, you know, you have to have a fan on the system. You gotta, you gotta be blowing some air across those heat sinks, and um, uh, they are um, um, uh, sensitive to current. You, you have to have an LED driver. You can't just go buy. Uh, a 24 or 32 watt uh, power adapter or something like that and plug it in you do actually need a good LED driver both for efficiency and for the proper uh, light brightness and uh, color temperature so there you go 6500k uh, with uh, basically I got two T5 tubes in there uh, creating a, you know a 50-50 mix basically of uh, actinic and, and uh, 10,000k and that's it good luck with your own uh, with your own project and uh, you can also find me on um, well I'll leave the link www.garyello.net the aquarium project some very old stuff in there but still quite appropriate some neat do-it-yourself projects and this is Ted signing off